Hi everybody, um, welcome to day two of ellipses. Today we're going to focus on finding the foci and graphing. Um, so the warm up asked us to find the center and vertices, which are going to be two very important things that we need for graphing. Um, so we know that the center is negative 6, positive 3. So we take the opposite of both of those numbers. Um, from here, I want to find my a and b values, right? I have to find a and b to find those. So since a squared is 4, a is going to be 2, and b is going to be 1. So since I see that my a value came from underneath my x, I'm going to add and subtract 2 from the x value of my center. And since I see that my b value came from underneath my y, I'm going to add and subtract 1 from the y value of my center. And that will tell me my vertices. So my first vertice, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. And then 3 plus 1 is 4. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So there are my four vertices. Okay, so finding the foci. I want to remind you guys that according to our picture, or by definition, the distance between the center and the focus, we call it C. Okay, so here's just a little picture. So here's my center, right? I know that I'm going to have two foci, they look kind of like this. And this distance from here to here is C. Okay, well, how do we find C? We're going to use this equation that is C squared equals A squared minus B squared. And we know that A squared and B squared are found directly in your equation. Um, I want to remind you guys that the foci are always located on the major axis. So they're always on this, the part that's longer. So if the bigger number is under your x squared, you're going to add c to the x value of your center, which makes sense. And if the bigger number is under the y squared, you're going to add c to the y value of the center. And just a really important reminder, a squared is always the bigger number. It doesn't matter whether it's under x squared or y squared. Um, so we're just finding the coordinates of the foci here, and the key to that is going to be finding c. That's really what I'm asking you to do. So we know that c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, I can see that a squared is 25 and b squared is 16. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get c equals 3. Now, since um, c or my bigger number is under x, so remember we said we're going to add that c value to the um, x value of our center. So I know that our center is negative 4, negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to add 3 and subtract 3 so I can find the focus to the right and the focus to the left. So my foci are negative 1, negative 2, and negative 7, negative 2. There you go. Now for number 2, once again let's find our um, c value. So I know c squared equals a squared minus b squared. In this case, um, I know that my a squared is underneath my y value, but I can still finish off like this. So 36 minus 1, c squared equals 35. So c equals the square root of 35. So now, let's find the center of our ellipse. We know that the center is positive 7, positive 5. And since um, my bigger number is under y squared, that's where my major axis is, I'm going to 
add square root of 35 and subtract square root of 35 from the y value. Now, square root of 35 can't be simplified, but you should always check to see if you can simplify your radicals. So for my two foci, this looks kind of weird, but they are just going to be 7 and then 5 plus square root of 35 and then 7, 5 minus square root of 35. Those are my two foci. So sometimes your answers are going to have radicals in them and that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to take all the things we've learned and um, use those key elements to graph our ellipses. So to graph an ellipse, you need to know the center, the vertices, and the foci, which we know how to find all of them now. And then all you do is you just connect the vertices to form an ellipse. Um, so let's start with the center for number one. Um, the center is going to be negative 2, positive 2. Okay. I do need to find my a and b values, so I know that a is 4 and b is 2. I'm going to write that in purple. Okay, since my a value came from underneath my x, I'm going to add and subtract it from the x value of my center. Since my b value came from the y, I'm going to add and subtract it from the y value. So I know that my vertices are 2, 2, negative 6, 2, negative 2, 4, and negative 2, 0. Okay, the last thing I need to find is the, um, my foci. And I know to find that I need to um, find my c value. So I know that c squared equals a squared minus b squared so c squared equals 16 minus 4 sorry that's a little hard to see so c squared equals 12 which means c equals the square root of 12 now this can be simplified So you see that it is 2 times the square root of 3. So for my foci, I'm going to be adding my c value to my x term. Because my bigger number is under x. So my two foci are going to be negative 2 plus 2 root 3, comma, 2, and negative 2 minus 2 root 3, comma, 2. So now we can take all of these things and create a graph. So let's start by plotting our center, which is negative 2, 2. And then let's plot all of our um, vertices. So we have 2, 2. We have negative 6, 2, which is going to be over here. We have negative 2, 4, and we have negative 2, 0. And then we connect them to look like this. Now, to place um, your foci, here's how I like to do it. I'm going to start at my center and move over my C value. So since I don't really know what this value is unless I plug it in a calculator, I can actually estimate this value pretty closely. Okay, so I know that the square root of 9 is 3, and I know that the square root of 16 is 4. So I know the square root of 12 is going to be somewhere between 3 and 4. So I'm going to start at my center, and I'm going to move over like 3 and a half spaces, 1, 2, 3 and a half, and this around here is where um, my focus is, and I'm going to go three and a half the other direction. One, two, three, and a half, and that's where my two foci are. Okay, let's try number two. We'll start with our center, which is one, zero. Now I'm going to want to find my a and b values. In this case, my a value is three, and it came from right here, and my b value is one. So since my a value came from my um, y, 
I'm going to add and subtract it from my y. My b value came from my x, so I'm going to add and subtract it from the x. So I can see that my vertices are 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, and 1, negative 3. Let's start by plotting those two things. Um, here's my center at 1, 0. Here's my vertices, so I have 2, 0, I have 0, 0, I have 1, 3, and I have 1, negative 3. Okay, now I want to find my c value. So I know that c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So c squared equals 9 minus 1. c squared equals 8, so c equals square root of 8 which is 2 times the square root of 2. So for my focus, my bigger number is under the y, so I'm going to add and subtract the c value to my y. So my foci are 1, 2 root 2, and 1, negative 2 root 2. Now to place those, I'm going to go back to this value. Okay, so once again, I know that the square root of 4 is 2, and I know that the square root of 9 is 3. So I know that the square root of 8 is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. So I can start it at my focus, and I can move up about 2.5 and, and put it there, and down about 2.5, and, and I can put it right there. Okay, um, so for the foci, it doesn't need to be exact because most of the time they are going to have radicals. Um, but it should be between, between the correct two numbers, and you can estimate it by using perfect squares that you know.